Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about the difference between a direct uh, cooling TEC system versus a chiller and why you would want to use one over the other. So we'll start with a direct block and sometimes I call these direct die but the computer geeks will not think this is direct die which is fair enough because uh, direct die would be removing the integrated heat spitter off the top of the CPU and then applying a TEC slash cold plate to it uh, but there we go so here we have the TEC in yellow here and we would apply some water which is going to be a light blue and you'd normally apply it through the inlet it goes through the block and out the top and then we have a really chilly side on the cold side of the TEC down here and then you have your CPU at the bottom or your load and that's what you're trying to cool and if it's a 100 watt CPU 100 watts going into here it's then going into your heat spreader getting spread evenly across the TEC which is very important then the TEC is moving it up and then it is being dissipated to the water and out we go. Now the advantages of a system like this is it is relatively cheap because there's only a small amount of copper involved uh, there's not multiple water cooling loops uh, it's quite small and it's very easy to insulate because all you need to insulate is the cold side That's if you want to insulate it, of course. Whereas a chiller can become a lot more complicated than that. So we have a hot side here, which is this loop here, into the radiator, into the res, which is in here, and back out. And we have a cold side as well. which goes into another reservoir over here and goes to the other side of this, these chiller blocks around like that. Now there's obviously a pump in here as well. Now the advantages of running a chiller is that you're basically unlimited with space. Here we could, we've got four TECs. Uh, versus just the single TEC here, although it looks gigan gigantic because I've, <laughs> I've got it so zoomed in. Now the disadvantages of a chiller system like this is that it's obviously far more complex. You have to have two loops, uh, which means more money. Uh, you can have problems with insulation, like this chiller is not insulated, so I'm theoretically losing efficiency out through all of the barbs, which are on the uh, the reservoir and on the blocks themselves. Another potential issue with uh, chiller is what happens when the water gets really cold, not like below zero. It freezes, and what happens to water when it freezes? It expands. Hmm. What happens to the water when it freezes and expands inside your water block? Uh, you can, of course, add antifreeze to it, but generally antifreeze will reduce the thermal efficiency of the water and therefore reduce the potential benefits of a TEC chiller. And from my personal experience, it kind of slowed the, the water's flow rate down. It became a bit thicker, uh, particularly when it was getting very frozen, sort of not frozen. But possibly I didn't run enough antifreeze in. Of course, you don't have any of those problems with a direct block. Uh, you can happily freeze a piece of copper. doesn't make a difference. So, the reason why you want a chiller is because you can have effectively limitless TECs. You can just keep adding them on if you really wanted to. And that's actually why there's a big gap here. Because I was supposed to add another TEC chiller in here. 
So let's look at the maths around that. So if we have one DEC, and we're calling a 200 watt load, it's able to achieve that at 26 degrees, and it's using 200 watts of electricity. Now let's say we had twice as much, this would be res the result. So same 200 watts of heat, we can now use less than half the power for the same cold side temperature. Well that's a huge saving. Or, if we're not interested in saving electricity, we could burn down some more trees, give it the same percentage of Umax, or input voltage, and then we've got significantly better cooling than we would have achieved with just the single TEC at the same input voltage. So that's really why you go for a chiller. chiller. You go for a chiller generally for increasing efficiency by adding more TECs, you undervolt them so they use less electricity for the same result as one TEC. And the obvious possible reason is that you just simply cannot fit enough QMAX or TEC against what you're trying to cool. So if you're trying to cool memory or your MOSFETs or the MOSFETs on a graphics card or a graphics card itself, you may be unable to actually physically fit a large 62mm TEC or whatever acquired TEC against it, but you'll be able to buy a custom water block that does. So it makes life a lot easier if you just chill the water and then send it to the, uh, the objects you're trying to cool. And from a lot of water cooling, well, a lot of water coolers point of view, uh, it's quite common that they will have, has spent, or have already spent a hundred million dollars on water blocks everywhere and have got a bit bored and now want to make it more interesting so they will now want to TEC cool it. So they've probably already got the water blocks to then tell them, oh just take everything you've got, throw it away and buy new blocks is a bit hard to swallow so it's much easier to go, oh well, just add a water chiller. And they'll probably go, yeah, that means I need to get multiple loops and more pumps and more complexity. And to be honest, I think that's why a lot of us are interested in this kind of cooling, uh, because it's jolly good fun. So that's why you want a water chiller. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed that, guys, and we shall see you on the next one. Bye-bye.